All right, folks, it's time for our next 224 Valkyrie video. Huge news, huge news in the 224 Valkyrie reloading community. Just yesterday, Sierra released a bunch of load data. So we now have data for a whole bunch more powders. They go from their 52, 53, 55 grain bullets all the way up to the 95 grain Match King. Nice big long powder lists. This is just outstanding information. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description so you guys can go and uh, download it. Just a ton of great options and not really any surprises. The powders look to be the likely candidates except for a couple on the slow end. Now this isn't a huge surprise. I think I have mentioned this powder in the last couple videos, but one of the powders they give data for is Alliant Reloader 17. And this is the highest velocity powder with pretty much all of the heavier bullets. So that's what we're gonna be shooting today, is some Reloader 17. Another powder that shows up quite a bit is Vitavori N540. So we've got some of that, we're gonna be trying that. And another powder that's given good velocities is uh, Ramshot Big Game. That's a powder I've never tried. I just haven't been lucky enough to find a pound of it, and I've never ordered any. But those three powders on the slow end of things were definitely good to see. And plus now we've got, uh, some published information to work off of for like CFE 223 and H380. So really huge news that, that Sierra released that data. I really appreciate that uh, we've now got a whole lot more to work from. So in honor of that, we are gonna shoot nothing but Sierra bullets today. And I wanna start out with the 69 grain Match King. I've always had very good luck with this bullet. Now in their new load data, they show a max charge with Reloader 17 of 28.2 grains. It's a little bit weird. Like that's that's a lower charge weight than the next step up at 77 grains, which we'll get to here in just a second. So I'm thinking this 28.2 grain maximum with the 69 grainers might have more to do with case capacity than actual pressure. So I'm interested to see what 28.2 grains looks like and you know whether that case is gonna be pretty full. I'm afraid that may be their limiting factor. Now they show an overall length of 2.160. They also show 2.160. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and bring in. The, so we're shooting the 69. We're also gonna shoot the 77 grain, which we shot last time, right? Our last video with Power Pro 2000 MR, we shot the 77. We're gonna continue to shoot it today. And they show a max charge of 28.6 grains. For all of these today, I wanna to shoot half grain increments. Still a little bit big, but I wanna give ourselves plenty of room since we're only taking 15 shots. I thought a half grain increment might, might work out well. Man, I'm kind of all over the place here, but I need to get to the discussion of overall length. So yeah, the 77 grain, we're shooting up to 28.6 grains, which is four tenths of a grain higher than we're shooting with the 69 grain, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Like I said, I think uh, we might be bumping right up there near the case capacity limit. Okay, overall length. For both of these bullets, the 77 and the 69 grain, they show a recommended length of 2.160 inches. Now in the last video, we shot the 77 grain all the way down at 2.120 inches, 40 thousandths shorter than what they're calling for. Now the reason we chose the overall length we did is we measured in my gun to see how long we could go before we hit the lands of our rifling, and we don't have room to go to 2.160. We're into the rifling. So with the 69 grain Match King, I pulled out my gun tested its maximum overall length, and I came up with 2.152 being where I hit the lands. So with the 69 grain, 2.160 isn't gonna work out in my chamber. So if you're using the new Sierra data, just be careful. If you go with their overall length, you're, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's gonna actually fit in your gun. So what I've decided to do with the 69 grain, I wanna go with 2.145 inches. That's still very close to uh, the measurement I got to the lands were only like seven thousandths off the lands. I might, it might be smart to go a little bit shorter, but ah, eh, whatever. We'll, we'll stick with that. 2.145 inches with the 77 grain. Let's shoot the same overall length we shot in the last video of 2.120 inches. And our last bullet, the 90 grain Sierra Match King, we shoot it all the way out at 2.260, which is what they recommend in their manual as well. So the charge weights for the, for the 90 grainer, they show a max charge of 27.0 grains. So once again, we'll shoot up to that. We'll do half grain increments. And I think that should put us in pretty good shape. Was that confusing enough? It's all right there on the screen, right? I don't even need to be reading it to you anyway. We should have been done five minutes ago. I should have said, hey, here's our load data. 
Let's move on, but I didn't. I rambled on for a while. We're shooting CCI 450 primers, which is what we've been shooting in the previous two videos. And the brass is the same brass that I've been using, which was recovered from the Federal American Eagle factory ammunition. This has already been sized. It's already been trimmed. So that's another really good thing we get out of this Sierra Low data is a, a kind of an official trim length. We looked at the SAMI drawing back in video one. It showed a maximum case length of 1.6. And we just assumed that 1.59 would generally make the most sense as a trim length. And that's what's in the Sierra data. So these cases have been trimmed to 1.590, 1.589, close enough. So these were resized in the method from the last video. We're not going to cover it. I've already resized them with our RCBS small base die. As I just showed, they've been trimmed. The flash holes have been deburred. This federal brass has got some horrifically terrible flash holes. Case mouths deburred and chamfered, and I've already primed these guys with CCI 450 primers. So we are ready for powder and bullets. Unlike the last two videos, which have been an hour long, this should be a short one. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out my charges and then just see you guys at the uh, bullet seating die. We've covered all this crap enough in the previous two videos. So our 77 grain max charge is definitely gonna be pretty crunchy. Powder levels up into the neck a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. So the 69 grain match king is first. We're gonna to continue to use the RCBS seating die that we showed in the last video. We've got the parts to fix our Forrester die, but we'll save that for later. All right, I may have gone a little bit short here on the first row, like 2.142, our original target was 2.145. It's pretty good looking seating depth. We're not gonna crimp these, and we're not gonna crimp the, the 90 grain Match King, but I think the 77 grain Match King that we're seeding down to that can lure, I think we will crimp it. So I've got my 69 grain setting. I'll seat these really quick and then I'll uh, see you guys once we're ready for 77s. All right, so I've moved on to the 77 grain Sierra Match King. These charges are pretty heavily compressed. And if you watch the last video, this die really marked up the 80 grain Hornady ELD bullet and it's kind of doing the same thing with this guy once the charges get compressed. Yeah, just a little bit of a little bit of a circular dent there where the seating stem contacts the bullet. So we'll just have to see how much it affects the groups. Yeah, it kind of sucks. So I haven't I haven't uh, crimped with a seating die in quite a while. I almost always use Lee Factory crimp dies whenever I want to crimp, but we don't have one of those for the Valkyrie, so let's go ahead and use our RCBS seating die. Now, as you might have noticed, I just seated all 15 bullets. I've got them all seated properly. You can set it up to where you seat the bullet and crimp the case mouth kind of in a single operation. But I've never, never been a huge fan of these, so I'm, on, I'm always going to use this guy like a separate crimp die. I'm going to back out the, the seating stem so that it's not even in the picture. I'm gonna run a completed case up into the die, screw it down until I feel the crimp touch the case mouth. There it is. Yep, there's pretty solid contact. I probably should have read the instructions before I started talking. Eh, they don't really give a good any good guidance about how much further you might need to go past how far where it touches. So yeah, I've screwed it down until it touches the case mouth. We'll go, it's a little less than a quarter turn more. That doesn't seem to have done much. Yeah, I'm measuring almost no difference. So there's another, maybe an eighth of a turn. Oh yeah, I can visually see it now, but. Yeah, I'm reading about two thousandths difference. So that's what it is. Just a little, just a little taper cramp right there into that cantaloupe. I don't know if it'll make any difference, but it's worth trying it out. This bullet shoots very well uh, when crimped in 223 over in our Mark 262 cloning series. 
we've crimped all of the ammo in that series and it's always shot really well. Okay, last up is the 90 grain Sierra Match King. So let's back that out, run an empty case up in there, down until it touches and this time, I think we were backing off about a half turn. So now we're back to a no crimp setting. All right, I think we're pretty close here with the 90 grain Sierra Match King. Now this guy, both our magazine and my chamber allow us to shoot these bullets longer than 2.260 if we want to. I think the first video, what did we shoot? Like 2.290. But we're going to stick with 2.260 in this video. It's what Sierra has on their load data. So eh, it's worth a shot. 2.258, 2.265. 2.262, 2.260, So maybe a couple thousands too long, but I'm not going to worry about it since we've got so much room to, uh, extra room to work with in our magazine and chamber. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like the 90 grain bullet is also going to have its ogive marked up a little bit there by the seating stem. The lighter charges didn't. Like here was the first charge. So it only started marking it when it started getting more compressed. All right, that's it. I think we're ready to hit the range. All right, folks, we're shooting the gun in a new configuration. I haven't really shot it yet with a suppressor. I fired a few shots suppressed early on whenever I was, whenever I still had an adjustable gas block on here and was playing around with it, but not enough to find out whether Maybe the suppressor will tighten up our groups. That was definitely the case with my 6.5 Grindle barrel. So let's see if maybe it's the same here with the Valkyrie. And that also means I'm gonna go ahead and hang my Magneto Speed V3 chronograph off of the suppressor. This is kind of our standard setup for most of my testing here on the channel. I've also switched out the, uh, the bolt carrier for no good reason. Just, uh, yeah, just trying something different here because if we don't at least see some signs of accuracy here in today's video, I'm most likely gonna go ahead and pull this barrel out and move it over to a different upper, just to make sure there's not something else going on with the system that might be giving us accuracy problems. Well, speaking of the barrel, this is an 18 inch wide oak armament barrel with a one in seven twist. Shooting off of a GG and G bipod, a rear bag. Let's get this thing lined up and start shooting. Okay, so we are shooting at 100 yards. The dots down there are one inch in diameter. The gun is completely cold. I haven't shot any warm up shots or anything like that. So here we go, 69 grain Match King at 27.2 grains. All right, so that shot was pretty low, but it's probably due to a little bit of point of impact shift with the suppressor perhaps, I don't know. All right, first of all, let's move this scope. Let's go up a minute and a half and left a minute and a half. Yeah, hopefully that'll tuck us a little closer up towards that bullseye. So several good things going on here. First of all, the group is not bad at all. Like I really like that as a start. Cold gun, cold shooter, all that stuff. Seems like a good start. Velocity nice and low. Actually, surprisingly low. I probably should have written down the numbers of what Sierra guessed on velocity with these guys, but I didn't. Whatever. Okay, we're moving on. The brass looks great. 27.7 grains is next. Yeah, it sucks that we had that one shot go high. 
that was almost a good group. The brass looks good, so we're moving on. 28.2 grains. All right, so our last group with the Match King, not all that impressive. The velocities didn't really get up to impressive numbers, and the brass still looked perfectly fine. I think here with the, with the lighter bullets, we're just limited by case capacity with this low of a powder. So moving on, 77 grain Sierra Match King is next. First up is 27.6 grains. Yeah, that last shot kind of screwed us up there, didn't it? Plus the brass hit the camera and everything. Okay, brass looks good. Moving on, 28.1. Man, we just can't seem to put a whole group together. I guess one thing to keep in mind is that these are the bullets that got a little bit boogered up by the seating stem. Maybe that plays a part. I don't know. Velocities are starting to get interesting. And brass still looks good. So last up, 28.6 grains. All right, so the brass still looked good. Maybe a couple of ejector marks, I don't know. We'll, look, we'll take a closer look once we get back to the bench. Velocity is not half bad, 28.59. Is about where we topped off with that bullet with uh, Power Pro 2000 MR. So at least in the 77 grain, I just don't know that we've got the case capacity to maybe get it over 2,900 feet per second. Those were compressed pretty well, so I don't know. The next up is the 90. And this is where it should shine. At least I think so. So let's see what we get. I'll tell you one thing I'm really happy about with this white oak armament barrel is the gas system. I didn't uh, measure the port diameter before I put the gun together. I probably should have done that. But whatever they went with is just about perfect because this really slow powder, you know, large charges of a slow powder can easily over gas a gun. And then I throw my suppressor on here. This is kind of the worst case scenario at least I think so, as far as what this gun should see for gas. And it's still just maybe barely over gas, just a little bit forward of three o'clock is where all of the ejection's going. The brass is in good shape. It's not smacking the deflector hard or anything weird like that. So very happy, because this is a standard low profile, you know, standard gas block on the gun right now, no adjustable gas block. So pretty good stuff. All right, let's get started. 90 grain match king, 26.0 grains is first. All right, so that velocity is a little bit lower than I was expecting here to start out. But the group, pretty good. Yeah, that's just about as good as we've seen so far. So we're moving on. Brass looks fine. 26.5 grains is next.
Well, that group kind of went to crap. That third and fourth shot really screwed it up. One more to go, 27.0 grains. All right, so that target, it's not the best we've ever shot. But on the whole, we got a couple good groups today. So let's pack up, get back to the bench, talk it out. Okay, folks, let's have a look at the brass. And I'm tempted to say there's nothing to see here, but there are a few suspect pieces that have a little bit of an ejector smear, a little bit of a swipe on them. And I can't be 100% sure that that's old. I think it's old, but then again, maybe it's not. Primer's nice and round. These are pieces from the 69 grain Match King, and yeah, our velocities never really got interesting with the 69 grain bullet, and I just don't believe we had enough powder in there to hit pressure. Here's a couple from the 77 grain row. Nothing looking bad. Primer's nice and round. Seems all good to me. These are from the 90 grain row, and this 90 grain row, we did have a couple that looked like it might be a new swipe but yeah, it looks like I picked up the wrong three here. Here's the other two from that row. Yeah, I think we're fine. Primer's rounded, nothing weird going on here, and certainly no serious signs. Okay, let's have a look at the groups, and we'll start with the 69 grain. We started off with our best group of the day. Sad to say a little bit, it's a .835 inch group, and it really wasn't a very good looking .835 inch group. And things really didn't improve here with the 69 grain Match King. The second group was ruined by that one that went high. And then the last group was just kind of all over the place, almost two inches. Velocities, not even close to where I want to be with the 69 grain Match King. And a powder like this, where velocity should be its big, biggest selling point. I was looking through notes and trying to figure out about where we should top out with a 69 grain bullet out of my 18 inch barrel. And I think, I mean, we should be able to hit 3,000 feet per second with this weight of a bullet. Like maybe the 65 grain Game King or the 69 grain Match King. And so far in the little bit of testing we've done, you know, 2,000 MR would be the best candidate to go up to those numbers. And if we look at the load data for this bullet, the Sierra numbers agree here. CFE 223 and Power Pro 2,000 MR are what they show the best velocity with. So I think just this light of a bullet, there's not enough case capacity to get enough powder in there to get velocities out of this weight of bullet. I don't know, we didn't hit pressure and these weren't exactly horribly compressed. So we could get some more powder in there if we really wanted to. I just don't know if there's much point with the 69 grainer. All right, let's move on to the 77 grain. Now this target is a little bit hard to read, kind of, right? Our last group was our best group, 0.912 inches. The velocities kind of started to get interesting up to around 2,860 feet per second but we were up in the 2930 feet per second range in the last video with Power Pro 2000 MR. So we weren't quite there as far as velocity goes. However, I should note that the charges we shot in the last video were over max on this new Sierra load data. So we might find that Sierra's max, I guess I could hold on one second. Yeah, looking at the notes in the last video, if we were at Sierra's max, we would have been right about this same velocity level of 2860. So that's interesting. I'm not sure if you guys even followed what I was talking about there. Eh, whatever. But basically the velocities were good, but not quite as high as we've pushed in the past with 2000 MR. Now even the bad groups, the first group and the second group really got ruined by some, by some wild shots. You know, if we looked at these groups as like best three, or just like what I like to call the eyeball test, just kind of sit back and look at it and let your brain ignore what it wants to ignore. This target shows promise. If we could just get rid of those flyers, it seemed like the bullet was trying to shoot well. So in the next video, we're gonna spend some time. If you remember the 77 grain Sierra Match King was getting seeding stem marks on the ogive. So in the next video, we'll try and remedy that either by modifying the seeding stem in our, in our uh, RCBS or moving back over to Forrester because maybe the poor seeding stem fit has something to do with these flyers. I don't know, man. 
It's going to take more testing to find out. So last up here is the 90 grain. We shot two halfway decent groups. That first group at a 957 and then the last group at about 1.1 inches. Those don't look terrible. They show a little bit of potential. And then that middle group, kind of like we were ta just talking about with the 77, three of them sure went into a nice group, but two of them didn't. And once again, I think this bullet got marked up, but I think it was only the last row, the 27.0 grain row was, an, was compressed enough for it to mark up the bullet a little bit. The other two should have been okay, you would think. The velocities here were a little bit more impressive. 2647 is uh, nothing to sneeze at, especially with a nice uh, standard deviation number. Back in our first video, we made it up to 2667 feet per second with PowerPro 2000 MR. So they're right there close to one another. So yeah, I'm not quite as depressed as I was at the end of the last video. The groups today, we're still not where we want to be, but it's improving. So the next video will probably be a duplication of this one. I kind of liked this bullet lineup. So we might stick with these three bullets, pick another powder off of their list, and just repeat the same thing. So the question is, did the suppressor help or hurt accuracy today? I don't know. We don't have enough data to determine that right now, but we'll, we'll test that in the future. We'll be doing a whole lot more testing without the suppressor as time goes on. I guess I did. I switched bolt carriers. Could that maybe have uh, helped things a little bit? I doubt it. Seriously doubt it, but we'll test to be sure in the future. I'll tell you another powder that's kind of on my mind right now because I shot another video that's going to go up right after this one, probably the following day in 6.5 Creedmoor with IMR 4451. 4451 and 17 are right beside each other on the burn rate chart. And this powder has really been impressing me over in 6.5 Creedmoor, like a lot. Like in that next 6.5 Creedmoor video, I get some uh, standard deviation numbers that just kind of blow my mind. But in the bigger case of the 6.5 Creedmoor, finding just can't quite get the velocity out of this powder compared to Reloader 17. Like maybe it's a little bit faster burning or the energy density or whatever of the, of the powder doesn't quite match up. So this might be a really good candidate for the Valkyrie. Charge weights should be just a little bit smaller than Reloader 17, I believe, but it might be worth, uh, might be worth playing around with this guy. That'll probably be a couple videos down the road though, because we've got all of these, all of this published data from Sierra. We might as well explore it and shoot some more powders that we've got published data for as we learn the, you know, the quirks of this new cartridge. I'm thinking CFE 223 might be a good one to test next. It's kind of going to be opposite of what we saw today where our velocities with the lighter bullet 69 grainer wasn't impressive at all, but up at the 90 grainer, it was shooting uh, pretty darn fast. I think with CFE 223, it'll kind of be the opposite. Sierra shows really good velocity numbers with the 69, the 77's okay, and then the 90 grain, they just don't quite get the velocity out of it that they did with uh, Reloader 17. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll put some thought into it. But like I said, it'll probably be the same format as today's video. Just kind of burn through a few powders here with a couple videos and see, just see what we see. Maybe we'll switch up primers. We've been shooting the CCI 450 since the beginning. Might be worth switching that. So I think that's pretty much it for today's program, folks. Keep an eye out for that Creedmoor video. Should be up tomorrow, most likely. And I'll see you guys next time.